Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for the opportunity. My name is Rufikar Akbar Muzaki. You can call me Zaki. And today I'll be presenting about how to integrate your JSON VT in open layers. I'm from Indonesia and currently working as junior web developer at Cartoza, a South African based first year as service provider with global teams in Asia, Africa, and Europe. Let's first talk about GeoJSON. GeoJSON is a format to encode a variety of geographic data structures based on JSON. It supports seven geometry types, point, line string, polygon, multi-point, multi-line string, multi-polygon, and geometry collection. Based on the type, GeoJSON is divided into two. The first one is feature. It has type keywords and then geometry and properties. And inside the properties, you can put any keys that you want. And then feature collection, which as its name suggests, a list or a collection of features. It has two keywords. The first one is type and then features. And inside here, you can put features and we'll go to the pros of the GeoJSON. GeoJSON is text-based, which means it is human and machine readable. And it is also editable in text editor. It also uses simple data structures, key value pairs, and it also uses common English words. But it also got several cons, like it does not have spatial indexing, and then because of being text-based, it got bigger sized compared to binary-based format, and because of the GeoJSON structure itself, I mean, you can see in each feature it has type, geometry, properties, and inside the properties there are many keywords. That's only for one feature. If there are 100 features, then those would be repeated 100 times. That will make GeoJSON size bloated quickly and will scale poorly. So how can we render GeoJSON in open layers? So first, we define the style. Here, we, here I define the stroke, which is the outer line of the GeoJSON and then the fill. And then we define the source, vector source, because GeoJSON is a vector format. We also provide the data projection and then the feature projection when we read the GeoJSON data. And then we add the source that we have created and also the style function to the layers, vector layers. And then finally, we render it to the map, which is the open layers map itself. We add the factor layers here. We could also add other layers like OSM layers, etc. And then the target, which is the ID of the div of HTML element. And then view is the default view that will be used when we first render the map. We could also set the map view to fit nicely into our vector source by getting the extent of the vector source and then fit the view to the extent. And this is the HTML part, simple one, with the div with ID map. Now after adding some functions like drag and drop supports and log, we'll see how those GeoJSON cons or drawbacks will perform when we render different sizes of GeoJSON. So here we render GeoJSON with 100 features with a size of 100 kilobytes. Then we render GeoJSON with 
a thousand features with a size of six megabytes, we can still zoom in and out smoothly. Next, we render 10,000 features with a GeoJSON size of 62 megabytes. When we zoom in, we start seeing the map becomes sluggish. Also, when we zoom out, and when we pan the map, it doesn't really follow our cursor movement, our mouse movement. Then, this is the biggest GeoJSON that we have. It has 150 megabyte size with 30,000 features. When we zoom in, it's really slow. It takes 2.5 seconds to zoom in. And when we zoom out three times, it, it takes 2.1 seconds. Now, when we do the panning on the map by moving our cursor and move it like that, in total, it takes 7.6 seconds. It's slow. Uh, so how can we tackle that? Well, if we have control in both the vector, uh, the server and the client, then we could change the, we could update the server response into, for example, vector tiles, which is more efficient. But what if we only have control on the client side? Well, we could render GeoJSON on the fly with the help of GeoJSON VT. GeoJSON VT is a library made by Vladimir Agafonkin, initially made for Mapbox, and it works by slicing GeoJSON so that it fits the currently rendered vector tiles. And now we will see how we could integrate it into open layers. First, we create the tile index. It's a GeoJSON VT objects. So we provide the data, which is the GeoJSON that we want to render, and also provide some parameters. The first is max zoom. It is the maximum zoom in which the GeoJSON VT will preserve the details of our GeoJSON. So um, if we provide a number in here, if the zoom level is higher than that, then GeoJSON VT will do some simplification. For example, currently we are on zoom level two, and we set the max zoom into 24, and this is how it looks like. The shape is still the same, but if the max zoom is set to zero and we are on zoom level two, then it does some simplification on the features that we are rendering. And then the tolerance. Tolerance is the simplification level. Higher means simpler. So for example, this is level five. We could say there is no simplification here. Also, when the tolerance is 10, nothing noticeable there. But when the tolerance is 25, we start seeing some features uh, getting removed on low zoom level. But when we're zooming in, then the features will be shown because GeoJSON VT consider that feature, those feature is not really important to be shown on lower zoom level. Then we define the extent of the vector tiles. And then the buffer. Also, we could define the debug level if we don't define the debug level, it will set it to zero, which means no debugging or logging will be done. But if we define S1, set it S1, it will do simple logging. And when the debug level is two, then it will do more 
robust logging like this. After we define the tile index, we will create the source. Now, because we are rendering as vector tile, even though the source of our data is GeoJSON, we use the vector tiles. On the top, in the tile URL function, we define the tile coordinates. We get the tile coordinates and stringify it. It is the XYZ coordinate of the vector tiles. And then the tile out function, it is a function which will be called when open layers load the vector tiles. So first here, we get the tile coordinate, and then using the tile coordinate, we get the sliced GeoJSON data from the tile index. And then from the data, we create a GeoJSON using replacer function, which I will show you later. After we have the GeoJSON, we read it and save it to the features while also providing the extent of the current vector tiles that's about to be loaded and also define the projection. And finally, we add the features to the tile. So now the tile that we will be loading contains the slice GeoJSON features. This is the replacer function that we previously used here. Basically, it converts the geometry types. So tile index, uh, GeoJSON VT uses number as geometry types, for example, one for point and multipoint, two for line string and multi-line string, and three for polygon and multi-polygon, while open layers uses this to indicate what geometry type it is. So we do the conversion here, and finally, return the feature and save it here in GeoJSON. And then for the format to read the GeoJSON Geo data itself, we use the tile pixel, tile pixel data projection because now we are using vector tiles. And the extent is like this because we previously defined the extent to be 4096. If we use different number here, then it should also follow. After we get the source, we create the layer, vector tile layers, and we also provide the source and the style function. The style function is the same. We don't change it at all. And finally, we add the vector tile layers to the map. Now let's see how it renders our biggest GeoJSON. When we click the zoom in three times, now it takes 1.2 seconds compared to 2.5 seconds previously. And when we zoom out, it takes 0 0.7 seconds. And what's also noticeable is when we pan the map, it follows our mouse movement smoothly, unlike previously when we render GeoJSON directly. So in general, at least in this case, GeoJSON VT is twice faster compared when we render GeoJSON directly in open layers. When using GeoJSON VT, uh, we could still utilize some open layers function. For example, when we click on the map, we could get all features and all layers available on the area that we click. Here is how to implement that. So when we click on the polygon, the feature, it will get any features available on that area. And this will get 
as the layers available on the area that we click. So using GeoJS on VT does not limit us from having some open layer functions utilized in our code. In the end, GeoJS on VT could be one option to be GeoJS on VT could be one option to be used when we only have options to change or we only have control on the client side. It could be used to render GeoJSON more faster and it's also simple and straightforward to use. Thank you.